Welcome to Airbus. Hello and welcome to the We Make It Fly Airbus podcast. In this series, we are focusing on all that matters in space, defense and security. My name is Ada Dronjak and in this episode, I am speaking to Dr. Frank Schubert, specialist in defense and aerospace security. Imagine driving in your car in Germany, heading to a job interview and instead of leading you to your desired destination, your navigation system displays your location in the Caribbean. Today, I would like to find out why the cyber protection of satellites is crucial and important to all of us. So the question here is, why are satellites targets of cyber attacks in the first place? They are obviously crucial for everyday life in our society, and we are all using them in a broader sense. Just think about TV broadcasts, weather forecasts, climate monitoring, or military communications, or simply think about your navigation system. It's a pleasure that I can say hello to Frank here and that I can talk to you and clarify my questions. Hello, Frank. Hi, Ada. Thanks for having me. How exactly does your team, Frank, protect us from such a scenario? The attack that you described is called spoofing. So during a spoofing attack, um, someone is uh, transmitting a counterfeited a false signal that looks like a real GPS or like a real Galileo signal for your satellite navigation receiver, but um, it actually isn't. And that makes your receiver think it is in a position where it actually is not. And this is quite a dangerous attack because everything looks really normal, but But something weird is going on and it's hard to find out. The technical entry barrier to do something like this actually is um, much lower than some years ago. And also there's no clear um, frontier between such um, radio frequency attacks on physical systems or cyber attacks on IT systems. In the future we will see more of hybrid attacks where this um, barrier actually gets quite blurry. Groups of people who are interested in, in doing things like this could be hacktivists, could be nation states uh, that want to spy or competitors that are interested in sensitive data. Also, secret services might intercept um, sensitive data. So it's important that um, space systems are protected from these threats. And what are other scenarios that I could imagine where it is important that satellite systems are protected? Space-based systems um, are ubiquitous in our everyday life. Think of um, weather forecasts, for example. Earth observation satellites um, take pictures of clouds um, in the atmosphere. And from that, we can create exact predictions of rain for the agricultural industry to have them determine when to bring out fertilizer, for example. Also, satellite communication is crucial, not just for TV broadcasts, for example, but also remote medical assistance could be done over satellite communication links and are actually also performed nowadays. Ships could be monitored on the high seas. Distress calls are forwarded using satellites from remote areas on Earth. So satellite and space-based systems are a crucial part of our everyday life. So in other words, it is not only important to have them protected so that I always reach my destination, but also it is important so that I can, well, in the end, buy my food in the supermarket, but also so that I'm always safe in in an emergency situation. Is that right? Exactly. Also, quite remote areas that you are not thinking of directly are impacted by space systems. GPS and Galileo, the satellite navigation systems, not only provide positioning services, but also an exact timing service. And that time information is used for our cellular networks on on Earth for mobile communication. And if the satellite navigation signal is disturbed in an area, also the mobile networks um, get into trouble. So there are many interdependencies that are not clear right away. So I guess it is important that all of these systems are constantly protected 24-7, basically. And how can I imagine such a constant protection? Is there always someone in front of a screen or is this automated? Both is actually true. We have security operation centers where automated monitoring is performed for our customers. Actually there, the whole IT landscape of our customers is being monitored 24-7. Also, we have operators being present in the SOC 24-7. And whenever an attack is being monitored or detected, then an alarm is raised to the operators and they decide what to do. They would analyze the situation and then 
provide information if the system is actually under attack. So I guess overall, it seems as if there are many interested parties in those systems and also that there are many possibilities for attackers to hack into such a running system that needs to be protected. And given that, uh, what are other possible threats that those systems could face? A space-based system not only consists of the user segment where the satellite navigation receivers actually belong to, like your GPS or Galileo navigation device in your car. There's also the space segment where the satellites belong to, the spacecrafts, and the ground segment where there are control stations, antennas um, that maintain the links to the satellites and steer them and perform uh, maneuvers. So our approach is to look at the system as a whole. We um, perform a procedure called security by design. So right from the design and definition of a project, of a satellite mission, um, we bring in our cybersecurity expertise, and this continues over the implementation. Uh, we do supply chain monitoring. We train the personnel. We provide the secure. We provide knowledge. We provide expertise for the secure operations. That means cybersecurity must be a part of all subsystems to provide protection to be able to detect hybrid attacks. So, if I understand you correctly. You and your team, you are responsible for a big and very comprehensive system that is very impressive. And it seems like an attacker could do immense damages that would affect all of us. So what happens after such an attack is detected? Then a satellite operator would enter a procedure called incident response. Um, and the most important point there is probably to not panic and in order to be able to do so, um, it's important to have a plan for a security incident in place. We also provide our customers with creating such plans and also security concepts. So that means there needs to be procedures for the monitoring of systems, for the detection of attacks, um, later on for collection of, the, of indicators of compromise. And once an incident is detected, we bring in our experts for IT forensics and, if required, even malware analysts that are able to reverse engineer malware that is damaging um, the network and the computers. Wow, that sounds very interesting. And considering all areas that Airbus is involved in, does Airbus offer the same security on its commercial satellites as it does on its military satellites? Yes, both domains are well protected. Yet the requirements differ very much. Let me tell you two extreme examples. A commercial satellite communication provider that is um, providing a service for remote um, medical assistance in real time, for example. So in that case, everyone is interested that the link to the patient is always maintained. We need to have a high availability here. I would never sacrifice the um, availability. Rather, I would say if I'm unable to provide data encryption, I would rather do, do that in an emergency case. On the other hand, a military service provider for satellite communication, for example, um, that is transmitting secret data, always wants to keep the confidentiality of the data. And in that case, one could argue, if I'm unable to maintain the confidentiality, I would rather sacrifice the availability. So even though both systems are well protected, requirements differ and different decisions could be taken. Sure, that makes sense. Thank you for that example. I think I can really understand that very well. The scope of your work and your tasks are so impressive. How does it feel to carry such big responsibilities in order to protect and keep up running such a huge and comprehensive system? I find it very good to have a great team um, behind my everyday work. So at cybersecurity, we work in a, in a team on our security by design approach and support our customers, as mentioned um, before, from architecture to secure operations. And then since Space systems engineering is multidisciplinary anyways, where you have links between electrical engineering, data handling, thermal engineering, um, mechanical engineering. So here cyber comes in as a new domain and that requires new ways of working. So we need to bring together our cybersecurity experts with the engineers that actually do the space systems engineering. And this works very well um, within Airbus. We have direct links to the satellite manufacturers, to the satellite designers. We are in discussion with the operators. We train the personnel. Uh, we can perform specific trainings for domains like spacecraft operation. Um, and 
in Airbus, this actually feels as if we would work in one big team. Wow, this is a great example of how Airbus acts as one. And it sounds truly interesting and exciting. I really like all of your insights. Thank you so much for sharing them. You're welcome. You're very welcome. I'm really happy that I had the chance to... Um, tell you about the importance of space-based systems, about satellites and um, how important these services are, even though sometimes we don't see them, but that they actually define our everyday life. That concludes this edition of We Make It Fly. If you've enjoyed this episode, do not forget to subscribe and rate us wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on all social media and use the hashtag WeMakeItFly to get in touch with us. We'd love to get your feedback. Thanks for listening. 